Hey everybody, so I'm back again with another recap of 90 Day Fiance. What, what episode is this? Six? Seven? I, how many more we got? I'm, I'm, you know what? I miss the simpler time back when Danielle was chasing Muhammad around all the United States of America and I agree with a lot of people that social media has kind of ruined the show for all of us like super fan viewers. Um, yeah, I don't even follow like the cast online. Like I have a couple people that I follow, but it's, I have like old cast people that I follow. Like I can't even think of anybody. It's not anybody from this, this cast currently. Um, and it's not even me like following them. It's just all the Facebook groups that I'm in, like all those people follow them. So every single day I'm getting some update on them, some posts they made, some beef they're in, somebody got arrested, somebody doesn't like somebody's mama, somebody's defending somebody. It's like after every episode airs, everybody has to plead their case as to why they're not an a-hole, even though TLC portrayed them to be an a-hole. And frankly, it's exhausting. And I'm like, do I need to just like mute all of my Facebook groups while I'm watching the show? Because it really does affect how I see them from week to week. I can't just watch the show. I'm tired. Like I'm tired when they come on. Cause it's like, I've been watching y'all for the six days in between. I saw you last and I'm tired of you. And now I got to watch you for two hours. Like, I don't know. I I'll think about that because I love my Facebook groups. Like they always come with the tea, but I'm getting weary and I think that's it. It's like, it's too much of them. Like I, I miss the days where all we would do was watch the episode once a week. We could process it. We had all week to think about it. We didn't see them again until the next Sunday. Now it's like we see something from these fools every day and I'm tired, not tired, tired. Like the R has left. I'm past tired. R is completely gone. I'm tired. Okay. But that's enough chit chat. Let's go ahead and get into this recap. If you're still watching this video, go ahead and subscribe. I mean, it's literally like a millimeter below us. And then that way you'll get every single update whenever I upload a video every single time. Go ahead and like and also share with a fellow 90 Day Fiance super fan like us over here in the trash community. Okay, on to the recap. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and this is probably going to be a short recap. Honestly, Lord, I don't even... I'm trying to like recall the events of Sunday night. I'm gonna just go ahead and start with Jay and Ashley and get the people that I do not care about out of the way. So this week, Jay and Ashley kind of start out the episode picking up where they left off. They're still kind of arguing. They're still kind of beefing with each other. Ashley still doesn't like the fact that Jay leaves the house without permission. I mean, without letting her know that he's going somewhere. And you know what? I don't really understand how hard it is to just let somebody know you're leaving. Like Jay is saying that he's not doing anything wrong. He's just running out to McDonald's or to the corner store. It's not a big deal. Why do I need to let you know that I'm leaving? But I'm like, if you live with someone, this is your fiance, this is your woman. I would think that just so she knows you're safe, it's not even about controlling you. I feel like Jay's making it a control issue. Like she's acting like she's my mom. No, you feel like that because you're young. Like a hit dog will always yell. So you already feel like you're way younger than her, that she's always bossing you around. So now that she's telling you, hey, just let me know when you leave the house. Now you're acting like a teenager because you are a teenager and you don't want to be told what to do. It's not about her controlling you. It's about common courtesy. I mean, my God, if you run out to get something to eat, you didn't think I was hungry. I mean, I wanted something too. You could have yelled up the stairs. Hey, I'm about to run to McDonald's. You want some nuggets? You want some fries? Do you want a McFlurry? Something like let me know and offer to get me some food too. I'm hungry too. Like I want to eat. Shoo, like who raised you? Were you raised by wolves? Let the girl know you're leaving. So they make up and blah, blah, blah. They get past that. So now they're going to visit the wedding venue. It's been a surprise up to this point for Jay because Ashley has been doing everything because Jay hasn't been here, which Ashley would have been doing any everything anyway because she's the woman and women typically plan weddings. Either way, they show up at this cute, y'all that barn, I was shocked when they went inside. I thought it was going to be country bumpkin, hold down, and it kind of was, but in a chic, like very simple, but cute way. I'm from the South, so I kind of slightly appreciate a little bit of a country wedding, and I actually liked that. I thought it was cute, it was simple, but it, you could really make that room look amazing. So, you know, everything's good, they're happy, they get back in the car, and Ashley's phone starts blowing up. Some person has commented on their wedding website which, you know, I get the point of a wedding website. I have a friend who is actually getting married on New Year's Eve this year in like 30 days. And 
she has a wedding website but she used it you know they have their story on there and stuff but she also used it for reservations so I kind of see the point of a wedding website well I do one probably not but you know whatever they have a wedding website people are commenting all kind of racial slurs and whatever you with the n-word and you shouldn't be marrying that monkey and all this just racist bs basically and you know jay gets real upset about it i really felt for him in the comments because i feel like that's his first time really experiencing racism like that blatantly like that but you know what i honestly feel like whoever was writing those comments was someone who knows ashley and anonymously like wrote those because they're not famous yet they're still filming at that point so nobody knows them so the only people who really know about their wedding are people who know them so who else would be going onto your website anonymously posting racist stuff than somebody who knows you ashley baby the call is coming from inside the house okay that's your cousin, your somebody, your friend's friend of a friend. That's somebody that you know in your neighbor. It's somebody you know, girl. And I mean, honestly, you can't control that. You can't control how people react to your relationship. You can only control your response to it. So I hope that, you know, I, I feel bad for Jay that he has to experience it for the first time in such a terrible way. But get used to it, my dude. This is America. That's basically it for Ashley and Jay. Let's move on to the next couple. Okay, so next is Jonathan and Fernanda. So this week, um, Jonathan and Fernanda, we really didn't see them much unless I'm forgetting something. But really the main thing was the dress shopping. So of course, TLC had to try to make it suspenseful. So Fernanda and Jonathan's sister, Jackie, show up at the wedding shop for her appointment to try on her wedding dress or to try on wedding dresses in general because she hasn't picked one yet. And so, you know, of course, she invited Jonathan's mom. On the last episode, she said she had to think about it whatever cc of course they're waiting and they don't know if she's gonna come oh my god is she gonna show up and of course she does i mean why would she not show up oh you know they go to the back fernanda comes out in the first dress and i mean my jaw dropped it was gorgeous and i'm still mad that she didn't pick that first dress i if that were me and i had that exact body i don't but if i had it and I, I tried that dress on. It was like a back out, like a like a almost too promiscuous, like peeking of the boob, but just just like tasteful enough and sexy enough. It was like the perfect balance between sexy and still covered. High neck sleeves, back exposed. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, and she looked amazing in it. Um, you know, and then they started making these weird comments about her age, CC and Jackie, and Jackie said that she looked mature in the dress, and she did. It was a very um, grown-up dress, which I feel like all wedding dresses are mature. I mean, I really didn't understand. Like, I feel like it doesn't matter how old you are. As soon as you put on a wedding dress, like, you're a woman. Like, wedding dresses are made for women. They're not made for little girls. Little girls don't get married, okay? Grown women get married. So, to me, every wedding dress makes everybody look mature. I mean, I... Uh, CC of course was like well I think it's too mature for like basically trying to throw shade at her for being young and say she's since she's 19 or since she's 20 she can't wear that dress because it's too grown up she can wear whatever dress fits her and looks good on her and she looked amazing in that dress and for them to be throwing shade and, and throwing these little age comments let's get over the age thing all right Fernanda's 20 John 32 let's get over it all right they 12 years apart you don't like it oh well he marrying her you know like this this is a grown man and this is a little girl and her family is accepting him like she said with open arms did not question why is this old man want my young girl they were like oh this is a great guy why can't they just see her for who she is that her son loves her and just get over the whole age thing I, i'm it's tired honestly it's a tired argument and i'm over it cc let the age thing go okay like whatever and then Cece proceeds to have a nervous breakdown in the bridal shop as Fernanda comes out in dress after dress because it's hitting her that this is real and that her son is actually about to marry this girl and I'm like yeah CC, you had 32 years to prepare for this moment baby girl why why are you why do you need a brown paper bag and have your head between your knees this man is 32 and he's getting married regardless of the age of the girl you've had years to prepare for this you should be accepting and dare i say happy that he's finally settling his his frat boy days are over he's growing up and he's settling down 
Why would any mother not be excited about that? Oh, a mother who does not want to let their son go. <laughs> That's right. Fast forward, uh, they try on like four or five dresses and then Fernanda picks one, they call it the Jackie O. It was a little too uh what's the word vintage for my taste i'm not a vintage that's not my style i don't like vintage stuff i like modern more modern things but if vintage is your style had like silver buttons all down her back miss mary neck I, I i it had the high neck and the sleeves like the first one but it just didn't do it for me like that first one did i really want her to pick that first one can she change her mind is it too late Anyway, she picked the Jackie O. She looked gorgeous and whatever. She could walk out in a brown paper bag and it, she would look amazing. So, they're getting married. Cece needs to get over it. I'm over her. Let's move on to the next couple. Okay, so next is Colt and Larissa. So, this week, Colt and Larissa... This week, Colt and Larissa are shopping for their own place. That's how the episode starts out. They went to go look at this loft. It was a one bedroom. Um, I think it was already furnished because they kept referring to the furniture and like how big the bed was and different things like that. And I was like, um, you know, you have to bring your own bed. I don't know why you're excited about this. That's not your bed. Like this staging. They don't stage. This is furnished. Okay. I get, maybe it was furnished. I'm confused on the details, but they went to go look at a loft. Um, and you know, I think that Colt just did it to kind of appease Melissa because I really honestly don't think that Colt has any plans whatsoever to leave the house with Debbie. Like, I really don't. I think that Larissa probably has been saying over and over that she wants her own place. And so Colt was like, all right, we can go look at some places. I don't think, first of all, that Colt is going to move into a place where he alone is the sole payer of all the bills. Does Debbie help him? Or does he pay, maybe Colt pays all the bills. I know he said something about Debbie being disabled, but the thing that really bothered me this whole episode was how Colt was trying to play it like, like he takes care of Debbie, like, like Debbie lives with him and he's like Debbie's caretaker. And I was like, hold on. Cause in episode one, she was cooking all meals. Okay. She said he don't even know how to make up a bed. So Debbie's cleaning all the house. Okay. Um, like, Debbie seems to be running the whole household. So, who's taking care of whom exactly? I don't see that Colt is taking care of anything but them doggone cats. I, I mean, I, it's probably good for her that she has someone to stay with or, you know, like a home where she can be taken care of financially. Maybe that's what he meant. But she definitely is not, like, being taken care of. Like, she's taking care of him. They're, they're both getting something out of the situation. And Colt knows that if he moves out of the house with Debbie and just in with Larissa, he would have to trust Larissa with cooking all his meals, cleaning, taking care of the household, doing all the things that Debbie does so well, and that he's used to doing her way. Like, he's used to the unseasoned food. He's been eating it 33 years. You know, Larissa come and she start making stuff with cayenne pepper. He not going to know. He mm -mm, Garlic salt. Oh, my God. He's not going to know how to react. You know, I, I <sighs> Colt ain't going nowhere. Colt did this to, to appease Larissa. So they get back home and they have a conversation with Debbie about what they did. Because apparently Debbie says they just snuck out of the house. She didn't know where they were going. So then they come home and they blindside Debbie with the fact that they went to go look at apartment homes. And Debbie played it cool. <laughs> I'll give Debbie that. She definitely did not react uh, quite as strongly as I thought she would. She she didn't get angry or upset. She just said, well, you know, if that's what you guys want to do. And she said that she would go to a, a retirement home or a home, you know, that where older people live, maybe a low income home for older people or something like that. She said she would do if they wanted to get their own place. Debbie lying. Debbie and Colt both lied this whole episode. Lying. Just lying. I don't believe now one of them. No. Debbie is not going to be cool with going to some retirement home. Colt is not going to be cool with living with Larissa without Debbie. No. Lies. I don't believe it. I mean, if it happens in the future or if it's currently going on now and I'm not aware of it, I just got to eat crow on that. But I honestly don't, didn't believe either one of them this episode. He just went to go look at that apartment, to, you know, so Larissa will shut up. But that was basically it for them. Let's move on to the next couple. Okay, so next is Eric and Leda. And just like Colt and Larissa, they are also shopping, but for something a little less expensive. They're just keeping it simple and looking for a bed and a sofa to replace that inflatable couch. So they go to this little furniture store and they start looking around. And of course, you know, Larissa is... Larissa, Lord Jesus, Leda <laughs> is, um, you know, just 
sitting on couches and they're looking at things and Eric, you know Leda's looking at the couches Eric's looking at the prices <laughs> uh, every time she sits down on something Eric is checking that price tag he's hearing numbers that are astronomical like 1200 4000 you know he like uh -uh. he's like we don't need to spend a crazy amount of money but at the same time it's like as much as I hate Leda and I hate her stank attitude and I hate how she's spoiled and think the world revolves around her I get it like you don't want to sleep in a twin bed with your man who's like six foot tall or taller like Eric looks like he's a big dude that's not comfortable they got Alessandra in the room with them they got inflatable furniture I mean I, look somehow we got to meet in the middle now I am a, a consignment shop thrift store Craigslist girl and you can judge me if you want but half of the furniture in here is either my grandmother's from a consignment shop estate sale, from a thrift store, or from Craigslist. And the thing about it is you have to pick well. You can't just go up in the thrift store and pick the first couch you see. You gotta search because there are good things out there because there are people with money who buy a new couch every two or three years and get rid of the old one when it really hadn't even been sat on. And now it's in the thrift store for $75 and you can go pick it up. Like somehow we have to meet in the middle here. Inflatable couch is a hell no An inflatable couch are we are we 19 in college eating ramen noodles that's a no like there's basic things as a grown adult that you need i understand being a minimalist like i get it i'm not saying he has to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars on furniture but at some point we've got to meet in the middle where our house looks nice it's furnished nicely and we still saved a lot of money so i think eric and later might need to go to the yard sale the, the estate sale the consignment shops and do that because eric is gagging on these prices he just can't get his head around it finally later gets just fed up at eric's cheapness and she just walks out and says you know i will find i'm gonna just leave don't let's not buy anything because eric is basically saying no to everything and later's like i want a bed today like now and you know she's just not willing to compromise with him I probably would have went to him like babe you know I know that we're trying to plan a wedding you know you don't want to spend a lot of money but can we at least look at some, maybe go on Craigslist look at some, some, some used couches maybe we can get it clean you know we can get it professionally clean we can get it for the cheap get it professionally clean that way the price doesn't exceed a couple hundred something but she's not doing that she wants it her way or no way he's not budging these two people are butting heads she storms out of the store goes to the car and then somehow the conversation turns from the fact that she's frustrated about not being able to see the couch in a bed because Eric's finances are not all there. It shifts to child support, which I don't know why she keeps bringing this up. Like, I don't understand why child support is such a difficult concept to a woman who has a child. Like, if Leda had no kids, I might, this is a big might, I might could see how she would not understand, especially with the cultural difference, like, oh, we don't do that in America, or we don't do that in Indonesia. I, I might could see why she would not grasp the, the whole, he has to give money for his child to be, but the fact that you have a child and you know, like, does Alessandro's father do nothing for him? Absolutely nothing. I, I get it that your family has money and y'all got it, but still, he should do something. He helped create that. He didn't lay down by himself. I would think that it would be a no-brainer for her, but it's not. She has no brain. She's mad about the child support. She's mad that he has to pay it. He's trying to tell her, listen, this is how it is in America. It's court ordered. I have to pay it. And she's like, well, I don't like it. And he's like, well, I don't care. And she says it's a burden. He says my children are a burden. And I was like, okay, Eric. I don't like you, but yes, tell her again. Okay, my children are not a burden. Okay, I love them and I'm going to provide for them because I'm their father and that's what fathers do. Like, I don't understand why she don't get this. Who, who is the man who married her? Who is this man? I want to know who her first husband is. Because her, her and him sound like a whole fool. Oh, Jesus. But, you know, she threatens to leave and she ain't going nowhere. Whatever. This is her putting her foot down and trying to scare him with the ultimatum of, I'm going to leave then to, to get her way. That's what spoiled people do. They threaten and they whine and they throw a fit and they stomp their foot until the person gives in and they get their way. And that's basically what Leda's doing. Leda ain't going nowhere. She's going to ride this out until she becomes Dr. Leda. But that was basically it for them. <laughs> Let's move on to the next couple. Okay, so next is Kalani and Asoilu. 
I'm really tired of getting on here week after week and talking about the racial differences between Kalani and Swaylu and how she doesn't like him and she's using the baby and everything else she can to get out of marrying him. Like, I'm literally just regurgitating the same thing week to week because that's what keeps happening. It's like further evidence that she doesn't want to marry him. She doesn't like him. And her family hates themselves. I don't know what else to say. I really don't. Like, I'm probably not even going to recap them. That's it. Like, that's my opinion on Kalani and Asuelu. Kalini showed up this episode. It was awkward between her and Asuelu, even though they kind of made up the last time they saw each other. They had a little lunch where, um, you know, Asuelu basically said that he, you know, liked that Kalani was American. But, you know what? I didn't even... I took that with a grain of salt because I feel like they were feeding him. Like they were asking him, oh, did you like that? She was American. What's he going to say? No, no, I didn't like that. She was American. I hate Americans. Like, what is he going to say? Like it, he's going to say, yeah, he, first of all, he's an 11 year old. He doesn't know that you're baiting him to make him look bad by asking him that question. He thinks they just want to know. And so he's answering honestly because he's a child. I'm over it. You know, he, he basically was trying to say that, Kalani doesn't like his family. There's things going on. I'm like, Kalani doesn't like his family because they're from Samoa. And we know that Kalani and her family don't like people from Samoa. I mean, she tried to, you know, justify it by saying the brother had said something inappropriate. He probably did, whatever. But the root of it is that y'all don't like Samoans. It, it, whether he had said something inappropriate or not. And that's basically what Asuelu was getting at, which is why he walked off because she was basically like first of all you're making it into something that it's not and then second of all you're using something that happened against the root of this issue is that you don't like Samoans I'm over it and I'm over them I, that's it I, I'm gonna say the same thing I've been saying for the last seven six weeks how long I've been doing this stupid show yeah let's move on to the next couple okay so next is Steven and Olga so I've got a lot to say about Steven and Olga. To be honest, you guys, so I was on Twitter Sunday night and I really had to just get off because I was so upset that people were saying that Steven was abusing Olga. And you know what? Like, you can't call everything verbal abuse. I know that verbal abuse is real. It exists. It happens to people. I get that. Like, I'm not diminishing what happened to you or anybody who's watching this or anybody who that's happened to. But just because you're triggered by something, because you saw a girl cry or you saw a man say something that might have been rude or disrespectful, doesn't mean that he was verbally abusing her. It, it might have been something that triggered you, but that doesn't make what he did abuse. Unpopular opinion of the week, I know, sorry. The thing with Steven and Olga, because some people were saying that the camera should have stopped filming, like it was to the point where it was so abusive that they should not have continued to film because that's how bad he was abusing her. You would have thought that this man literally called this woman out of, out of her name, every name in the book called her a stupid, lazy, filthy Russian, you whore, you B-I-T-C. You would have thought he said that the way people were reacting on Twitter. And I was like, he literally said he wanted love and affection. He wanted attention. Like that's what he was telling her. He didn't raise his voice. Was he rude? Yeah. Was he being insensitive? Yeah. The girl just had a baby. Like she has a C-section scar. Don't nobody want to cuddle up with you in the bed, Steven, with my stomach was just open. Just open. I don't want to cuddle with you. Like, he needs to give her time. He's clueless. He hasn't a clue as to what's going on with her emotions, with her body. He doesn't get it. And so he thinks that they're going to be back lovey-dovey real quick. And he doesn't understand why she's paying so much attention to the baby and not focusing on their relationship. He just needs to learn that, hey, for the first month or two of the baby's life, you don't exist, dude. You can go get some milk and some diapers and get up in the middle of the night a couple times, but that's basically it. There is gonna be no romance. There's gonna be no huggy, huggy, kissy, kissy. It's not gonna happen for the first few months of the baby's life. And he just doesn't understand that. I mean, Steven, to me, said what he needed to say. It was rude and kind of disrespectful, but he said what he needed to say. He was dumping his feelings on her. This boy needs therapy because he's trying to dump all his feelings on her and she doesn't know what to do with them because she don't know what to do with her own feelings. But that was not 
verbal abuse, you guys. Like, y'all need to really take a step back and rewatch that whole scene. I mean, when he felt himself getting upset, he left. Like, he went outside to gather his thoughts and came back in. Like, I just want to know, if you thought it was abuse, really, at what point was did the abuse occur? Was it when he told her that you haven't kissed me? Was it when he told her you didn't cuddle in the bed with me? How How is that abuse? Like, he's saying things that she hasn't, she hasn't done them. Should he be considerate of the fact that she just had a baby? Uh, yeah. And shut up? Uh, yeah. Should he not be mentioning this at all and help her feed this baby or do something like that? Uh, yeah. Is he verbally abusing her? I'm just, I didn't see verbal abuse. I didn't see it. They're struggling because they don't even know each other. They've had this baby and now they're trying to be parents and be in a relationship all the same time. And they're 20 and they don't know what they're doing. That's basically it. No verbal abuse. He doesn't know what he's doing and neither does she. And that's basically what it boils down to, guys. I think y'all need to take a step back, okay? Let's calm. Let's take a deep breath. Let's look at this rationally, okay? I, I, I'm i sorry to anybody who's ever been verbally abused. And if Steven's behavior reminded you of someone, I feel for you. But that man did not verbally abuse that woman. I just don't think he did. I didn't see that. And I just don't agree that he did. I'm rooting for Steven. I'm rooting for Olga. And I'm rooting for baby Richie. And let me tell you something about baby Richie. If that little boy don't do nothing else, he gonna eat. Because every scene, Olga has her boobs out and that baby head is on those titties and he is eating. That little baby boy can eat. He hungry. Either he eating or he crying because he ready to eat. Every scene. I don't know how often they film, but that little boy, he can eat. Okay. But I mean, that was basically it. So those are my thoughts on the whole verbal abuse thing. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you agree with me, cool. If you don't, cool. But let's be respectful of each other and each other's opinions. You can say what you need to say. We can all disagree. Just don't get disrespectful in the comments. Just be careful how you say things because abuse is real and people do get triggered by it. And I understand that. So if you don't agree with me, fine. Just be respectful in the comments. But that's it for this recap. Thank you guys so much for watching once again. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter at N-I-C-H-I underscore P underscore tweets for all my live tweets during the show as it airs in real time every Sunday night. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Every single time you watch these videos, you have no idea what it means to me that even one person watches my stupid behind get on here and talk about this stupid show every single week. Bye guys, I'll see you next week in the recap. So at this point in the after show, I'm gonna answer some questions that are probably gonna get asked in the comments. Um, who did my hair? Me. Um, yeah, I always do my own hair, except for like three times a year. Um, what's on my lips? Unfortunately, I don't know the name of the shade, but it is Black Radiance Perfect Tone Matte Lip Cream, and it's in this shade. I have no idea what this is called. It doesn't say it on here. I don't know what I bought it in. Um, but maybe you can take a screenshot or something and go find it in Target or Walmart or wherever. Um, some of you are probably wondering where Ace is. He's actually right there sleeping peacefully. And I made it through a whole recap without him waking up and bothering me. As a mother, you just don't understand how amazing it is when your children don't bother you while you're working. Um, but yeah, he's here. He's, he's, he's down there snoring away and probably farting a little bit too. Tends to do that in his sleep sometimes. Yeah, the joys of dog motherhood. But, um, yeah. You guys want to see him? Sleeping peacefully. Hold on. He's probably going to wake up now. He says the camera on him. Okay. Alright, so everybody knows he's alive. He's fine. Oh, he's sleeping good. He's not moving at all. You guys pray for my forehead. I don't know what's going on, but I'm playing whack-a-mole with pimples. It's like every time I get rid of one, another one pops up. I don't know if it's stress or what, but like my skin doesn't, I don't usually break out. Sometimes I get one, but it's like boop, 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 boop. I'm like, oh my God, chill out forehead. Okay, that's enough. I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>